Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. How good is Shannon's Insurance? They offer us as enthusiasts just so much more. Whether you have a classic car or a late model car, Shannon's is for you. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. You can also visit Shannon's online at shannons.com.au and whilst you're there, sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club. It's just so easy. Go to shannons.com.au, log on and join other enthusiasts just like us. And while you're there, you can watch catch-up episodes of your favourite TV show. The Shannons Club, exclusive to Shannons at shannons.com.au. When it comes time to rebuilding, restoring and preserving your American-built classic GM or Ford vehicle, you cannot go past National Parts Depot. They have comprehensive catalogues that have to be seen to be appreciated. National Parts Depot freight to Australia and New Zealand every day of the week and you can find out more at npdlink.com. National Parts Depot, restoring history since 1976. Whether you have a large engine or a smaller engine such as this 1275 here in this legendary Cooper S, it will take Penrite Oil. And what a company. Established in 1926, Australian owned and Australian made. Penrite also have a tech line that you can take advantage of if you're not too sure on the type of oil you should be using for your particular application. Find out more at penriteoil.com. Penrite, simply a better class of oil. And on today's show, I have travelled to Melbourne, Victoria to the Victorian Mini Concourse Club and Car Display Day. There's no doubt about the Mini. It's a small car that over time has had a huge impact on motorists around the world like it or lump it, the Mini has impacted upon hundreds of thousands of people as a domestic car, a racing car and now a classic car to one of the highest levels. The Mini, as you know, is a small economy car made by the British Motor Corporation, more known as BMC, and its successors from 1959 through until the year 2000. The original is considered a British icon of the 1960s. Its space-saving front-wheel drive layout allowed 80% of the car's floor pan to be used for passengers and luggage, and this concept influenced a generation of car makers. The vehicle is in some ways considered the British equivalent of its German contemporary, the Volkswagen Beetle, which enjoyed similar popularity in North America. In 1999, the Mini was voted the second most influential car of the 20th century behind the Ford Model T. And as diverse as the Mini product was, there was the iconic Mini Moke, which to me always seemed like a whole heap of fun to drive. But it was a utility vehicle intended for the British Army and was originally built as a twin-engine four-wheel drive. Although the four-wheel drive Moke could climb a one-in-two gradient, it lacked ground clearance for military use. The single-engine front-wheel drive moke, as we know it, enjoyed some popularity, however, in civilian production. About 50,000 were made in total from 1964 to 1968 in the UK, from 1966 to 1982 in Australia, and from 1983 to 1989 in Portugal. And moke is archaic British slang for a donkey. And if you had a delivery service around the tight streets of the CBD, Mini made a panel van, and they were an incredibly versatile vehicle. The commercial panel van was rated at a one quarter ton load capacity. It was built on the longer Traveller chassis but with outside windows in some cases and it proved popular in the 1960s in Britain as a cheaper alternative to the mini car. It was classed as a commercial vehicle and as such carried no sales tax. The gross vehicle weight is 0.95 of a tonne and the mini panel van ran from 1960 to 1982. Almost 522,000 vehicles were built. 
Making our way through, we've got Mikey. How are you, Mikey? Fantastic, Fletch. How about you? Good, mate. Good. You're here with your 63 Traveller. Tell us about it. Well, it's from originally from South Africa and uh, via New South Wales. A uh, fellow up there did the majority of the restoration for it. And uh, now I just polish it and keep it uh, going for weekends. It's good, mate. I mean, a woody as well. You're driving along, got the hat on. I mean, you know, you're in code with the car. You've got to have a look, mate. You do. <laughs> you do. Now, what sort of condition was it in when you got it? Uh, well, it's pretty much as you see it, other than uh, probably two dozen layers of polish. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, the fellow up in New South Wales did the majority of the work, yep. and it was abysmal at that point. Good score to get a car like this too because it's the old thing, isn't it? I mean, uh, commercial or used for commercial applications, they were usually bashed around. I mean, this is stunning. It is. And the, the good thing with Australia, of course, you keep it here, you don't have the salt in the roads and you don't have to worry about the conditions quite so much if you keep it away from the seaside. So, all good. Tell me, Mikey, where do minis go back with you? Were you a little guy and, and used to appreciate the mini? Uh, my wife's uh, father used to rally them in the UK, up in uh, North UK. And somehow I just got infected with the, with the whole mini bug. <laughs> and this is probably number nine, I think, on the list. Yeah, yeah. And I've stopped uh, trying to make them go faster. And I just appreciate them yeah. for what they are now. They don't take up a lot of space either, do they? No, I had three in the garage at one point, but we're down to two. And that was just, uh, that was just in a one three metre square space. It is a, it is a fairly <laughs> small garage. You'd be surprised what you can fit in. Yeah. So, Mikey, engine-wise, tell us what's going on under that big hood there. <laughs> <laughs> it gets them every time. Come on. Me up, bro. Uh, it's just a uh, slightly warm 1275. Yeah. <laughs> slightly warm, it's better, better, than, better than having a cold 1275, uh, isn't it? Hey, all right, let's... Mike, Mikey, thanks for being on the show, mate. You're, you're a good guy. Thanks, and Fletch, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you haven't been doing much lately. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my wife. Whatever she says. Pleasure having you on Classic Rest as Mikey. Thanks, mate. Keep up the uh, fine work in the preservation of this classic mini. Thank you. Cheers, Fletch. Time for John now. How are you, John? How are you, Fletch? Good, thanks, mate. Coincidence, isn't it, eh? John yeah. Cooper, and your, your name's John? Oh, it must be a very yeah. good name. You've got a Cooper. Now, tell us the story. This is a, a, a bit of a special car here. Yeah, uh, it's a 2000 John Cooper Limited Edition S Works, of which they only built 35, which were an anniversary model of them winning the World Formula One Championship 5960. And it is actually the last one of that 35. Isn't it great that they've kept the original, traditional style? Well, it was great because... Um, BMW owned Rover at the time threw a lot of money at them to keep them going until 2000 but they wouldn't comply to safety regs after 2000. So yeah it's great that they were able to keep it going that long. John has a car, I mean obviously you enjoy it, it's a little pocket rocket. It is. Um, it, it's got 90 brake horsepower on tap which is about 40% higher than the standard Cooper S. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's fuel injected. Yeah. Uh, it also weighs a heck of a lot more yeah. than the others because of all the safety gear yeah. it carries. It carries airbags and all. Mate, sensational power to weight ratio. Not only that, on the inside you've got some comfort too. Nice red leather going on there? Yes, uh, that, that's standard. Um, the the colours of the car is, is Brooklyn's green with Old English white with the cranberry red leather which was Cooper's racing colours. Yep. There's something about that, uh, well, was the uh, British racing green that was so synonymous with a lot of the British racing cars, wasn't it? Yeah, um, but British racing green is a lot darker than the Brooklyn's green, which varies depending on the light that you're in. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. John, thanks for that. Um, look, it's great having you along on the show today. Yeah, thanks. Um, so guys like this that bring different cars along that make events like this so interesting. You hear of a mini show, it's not just minis turning up, there's so much variance. Yes, there is. Um, when you think there were 5.83 million built and the variance from all around the world is just incredible. Yeah. Uh, so you've got here today, you've got cars from very early Mark 1850s yeah. through to my car, which is a Mark 7 Cooper S, yeah. sure. which is one of the very last. Yeah. Good on you, John. Thank you, Fletch. I hope you're really enjoying this week's episode of Classic Restos around these sensational minis. Of course, thanks to Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. Back with more in just a moment. Okay, time for David now. How are you, David? I'm good. Very good because I'm here at a special mini show. So tell me, where, does the, where do minis go back with you, David? Uh, they go a long way back. Uh, about the second, I, I first couple of cars were BMC and then originally then I got a, a mini deluxe in 1965 yeah. uh, when they became a little bit better with wind-up windows and heaters and things like that. Yeah. 
and uh, it was a fantastic car but for long trips because at that stage I was doing a lot of driving up to Mildura and across to Hamilton and so on because I uh, being a teacher I was moving around a bit. I really wanted to have another Mini and I just waited, bided my time and until I could buy another Mini and what I actually did was I bought it 50 years to the day that the first Mini came out. It was just one of those things that happened, it was just there and it was the day 50 yeah. years later that isn't the Mini that, came out. Isn't that amazing? And in 1966 too they had some good racing accolades at Bathurst, didn't they? Oh absolutely. Uh, I've made that point for people today that they're the only car that has won Bathurst and the Monte Carlo. Yeah. And I don't know that any other car will ever do that. The Cooper S was good for 100 miles an hour, but the thing is their braking distances, they could just be left so late before they had to put on the anchors. Oh, that's right. Mr Gonis, when he originally designed the Mini, he, he didn't have any idea that it would ever be raced. But John Cooper saw very, very early on that it was a fantastic car because of the handling and everything else about the car, the room inside, considering you're getting bigger people to get in them sometimes. And they, it was just a fantastic machine and it just took off. Yeah. Whether they were used in a domestic application or as a race car, they were certainly fun to drive either way. Enjoy seeing your car here today, David. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Fletch. It's no good worries. to see you in the flesh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving through as we do, we've got Chris now. How are you, Chris? Good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. 1970 Mini K. Now, this is a car with a difference. We're in the department now of cleverness. A little bit of uh, innovative thought has gone into this car. An engine not only up front, but one in the back. What's going on there, Chris? Uh, insanity, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's a push me, pull you. Yeah, that is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you, want to, do you think you're actually going to get to drive this car? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, fairly shortly, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. So when you've had a good week, you can run both engines, and when it's a quiet <laughs> week, you just run one. <laughs> that's yeah. the plan. You're going to double your fuel bill. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, And the performance, hopefully. But anyway, we'll see what happens. It doesn't matter, does it? But, OK, what inspired you to go engine in the back? Oh, well, it was done by BMC years and years ago. Yeah. And, um, because the Moke was a four, it was a, a two-inch. Had a version, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, well, I always liked the idea, and just yeah. after 40 years, whatever it is, I decided to have a crack at it. Not yeah. a silly question, but uh, a nightmare in working it all out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way, yeah. but I enjoyed it. Yeah. I've enjoyed it all. Yeah, it's, not, it's not completed yet, but it's not for, all of the, the back's broken, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell it. <laughs> it's good to talk to people that in some cases have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, well, that's exactly it, mate. Yeah, I did have a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> was, well, yeah. Well, look, there's other things you could be doing. At least you're, you're giving the brain a good workout. I mean, it's no easy project by, by any stretch. Uh, I take my hat off to you for at least giving this a go. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's not finished as yet, but it's... Yeah. it's yeah. Fine-tuning, basically, yeah. from now on. Chris, great catching up with you. But yeah. I tell you what, mate, with an engine in the front and an engine in the back, you're not going to know if you're coming or going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well, like, Fletcher. That thanks. took some getting out. Thanks, mate. <laughs> the Mini K was built here in Australia at Zetland, New South Wales, between 1969 and 1971. Using 80% of local content, the Morris Mini K was advertised as the Great Leap Forward. The Mini K, with the K standing for Kangaroo, had a 1100cc engine and was the last round nose model to be produced in Australia. It was originally priced at $1,780 and the Mini K was offered in two-door sedan and two-door van body styles. With me now I have Christian, the president of the Victoria Mini Club. How are you Christian? Good Fletch, how are you going? Good mate, good. Uh, glad to be here. First year for Classic Restos and uh, take my hat off to you. Well done on today's efforts. Cheers, mate. It's been an absolute ripper of a turnout and honestly I can't believe how many cars come out of the woodwork every time we do this. There are new ones every time. It's yeah. just bloody brilliant. Isn't it great how strong the Mini Fraternity is? Oh, loving it. It's it's one of those things I'm just happy to be a part of. So, yeah, yeah. yeah can't can't pass it up. Christian, people watching the show that want to be a part of this fantastic little club, uh, website details? Yeah, uh, mini.org.au. Yeah. Uh, details are on there and uh, they can work it out from there. Awesome. And you don't have to have a car to belong to these clubs. If you're interested in the Minis, be a part of the club. It'll inspire you, help you bring it on, I guess, to go and purchase one of these fantastic little cars. Tell me, Christian, what's it like out there in the Mini scene? Are these cars getting a little hard to come by now? Yeah, they are a little bit more difficult to find than what they used to be, but if you keep looking, you eventually find what you need. And generally, the person who's selling it to you is pretty reluctant to sell it when it comes to the crunch, but uh, you know they're just loved. Yeah. Christian, how many years has this event been running? Oh, uh, longer than what I've been around. I've been a member of the club for about 11 or 12 years now and it's been going for well longer than I have. Yeah. 
Good. Is it the same place each year? What's happening in 2014? Where can we expect to see some events? Uh, you'll find them on the website when we know. Yeah, that's the best answer ever. Good on you, Christian. Thanks, Fletch. No Great worries. for coming out. Thanks, mate. My pleasure. Look at this gorgeous little 850 Mini here. What a beautiful car. Now, I just hope the owner, when he leaves here today, doesn't leave in a huff. <laughs> With me now, look at this. I've got Tommy Returns and Joni. How are you guys? Oh, very good. Very good, Fletch. <laughs> How are you, Joan? Excellent. Yeah. Tell us. We, yeah. we all know We all know Tommy from G or G G or, right? Yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although there's no go-go's here today, what are you thinking of this mini event? <laughs> well, this, this mini event is very, very big, although it's mini, because there's yeah. lots and lots and lots of minis here. Well, when I said it's would, a maxi. When I said to Tom, maxi would you, maxi, maxi mini. When yeah. I said to Tom, would you like to come to a mini show, he thought just ten people would be here. <laughs> that's, that's right, not, I did. That's not all yeah, you see, us Scots, we're not dumb. <laughs> We've got a lot of working pieces up here between our ears. <laughs> and he was but there's working. more than ten people here today. That surprised me. He it's was not... working on it when you said mini because he said mini. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, <laughs> the fraternity's turned out here in full force today, haven't they? They really have. And we haven't mentioned Gogo Mobile once to any of them. <laughs> Sharon's and Penrite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right on the button. Major, major sponsor of the TV show, go to classicrestos.com.au. Guys, lovely to catch up with you again. Great to see you. Thanks Thank for turning you. up Great here to today. See you, it's Fletch. our pleasure. Love you. Do Thank I get you. another kiss? Oh, for sure. I always get one. Oh, Thank you. you. <laughs> that comes with a job. Someone yeah. has to do it. Yeah, you don't know how squashed I was in between the two of them, though. <laughs> All right. Classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show to see how my major sponsors can help you and to find out information about considering a Fletch tour to the USA in 2000. 2014. Hope you're enjoying today's show. Back with more after this. The Mighty Mini. It's just so good to see so many congregated here today. Did you know that over 200,000 Minis were built here in Australia, with a total of 5.4 million being made from 1959 through to the year of 2000? We've got Dale now. Hello, Dale. How are you, Fletch? Good, mate. Good. 67 Moke. Nice car. How long have you had it? I've had it for about five years. I bought it uh, on eBay, actually, and pretty run down. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too rusty, but yeah. it was in pretty shabby shape. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, a bit of spit and polish, and it turned out like this. Mate, if you're a tight bloke, do up a moke because you've got no doors to worry about, no turret, no bonnet. You're in front of mile. Yeah, and you'd also have no girlfriend because uh, yeah, they just uh, they just uh, empty the em empty the bank account. That's for sure. <laughs> what a fun car, though. I like with the way you've gone here because it is a moke. I mean, it's almost the forgotten car, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. I just love how plain and simple and empty. You know, I've got a yeah. I've got a switch to turn it on, a headlight and yeah. wipers if you're game enough to drive it in the rain. Yeah. Which so, yeah, you don't see many cars with just three wires for a main wiring loom. Yeah, yeah. All, all my all my friends look at it and say, well, "You can't drive that in the road, can you?" I say, "Yes, I can." But yeah. I, I still feel naughty every time I take it out, like I'm doing something wrong. That's a sad point because he does take it out on the street. Listen, uh, what was your build time here, Dale? Did it take two, three, four hours? How long did it take you? Uh, when I got it, I uh, the idea was, yeah, quick, uh, quick bit of paint, get it through roadworthy. Yeah. That ended up, you know, a two pack thing. But you know, it took maybe five or six weeks to paint it. Yep. Uh, yeah, got it roadworthy, drove it for four or five years, yep. um, and then just recently, uh, probably a 12 months to do the, the front end, like do all the suspension, do all the engine, rebuild, and get all that bit pretty. Yep. Um, Dale, credit where credit is due. I mean, your attention to detail here is very, very nice. I mean, around the engine bay is beautiful. You've got the alloy radiator there. It's, a, it's, it's very, very nicely done. I like the paint colour, the, the covering on the seats. It, it's a neat little unit. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I love Street Machine. Um, I've actually got a yeah WB three oh eight, and I just love yeah everything Street Machine, everything clean and empty. So uh, yeah, when I built this one, I didn't want any any wiring any wiring to be seen. Just yeah. wanted to look in there and That's see good. a clean engine. Dale, size of the engine? Uh, twelve seventy five originally, bought out to maybe thirteen thirty something. Yeah. Go well? Uh, yeah, goes nice. Yeah. I have respect for it because I built it myself so I know the time and effort that goes into it but yeah gets up and boogies. The suspension too I mean rock solid I mean you, you give it a rock there from the roll cage and you can feel the solidity in the car. Well that's right yeah mini suspension is a cone or, or some are hydroelastic this one here is cone suspension but yeah I've got new cones which are nice and stiff everything's adjustable up and down um, uh, camber caster it's all adjustable so yeah it's a neat thing to spin around corners. Good on you Dar. thanks for bringing such a different car to a show like this mate well done. No worries thanks Fletch. We maybe get up of a morning we don't think of uh, the fraternity that own the very old cars now what's going on there when it comes to oil 
oils for older cars are different from oils from our newer cars. Get back to your old, um, your pre-1920s cars, they had like very primitive oiling systems in them and very low detergent oils. So, and they were basically total loss systems. So basically most of the oil ran out of the car. Walk us through an oil, for example, that you would use in a 1910, 1915 model car. Well, Fletch, this would be one of our heritage oils, uh, LTM or MTH. LTM stands for light to medium grade, round about a mono 30 type grade oil. Then we look along the line and we, we come from the 1920s to an oil with a picture of a Mini on the front of it. How cool is that? Well, we developed an oil just for the uh, BMC Mini where it's a 20W50 uh, classic grade oil, high zinc and designed to run in the engine and the gearbox, to have an engine gearbox in one. So if you drive an older car right through to a British car and you're not too sure what type of oil suits you best, call the tech line. Utilise these people. They're easy to get hold of. Go to classicresto's.com.au. You know who the major sponsor is. Click on the logo to be directed to their website for more information. Thank you, Brendan. Thanks, Fletch. Last cab off the rank. What a way to end an episode of Classic Restos here today. We've got an original 1962 850 Mini. Welcome to the show, Roger. Thanks very much, Fletch. Mate, I just had to pick on you. I've been glancing at the car on and off all day, trying to find the owner. Glad I caught you on the way out of here. Yeah, we've been hiding, playing noughts and crosses there while, uh, while the thing's been happening today. <laughs> Mate, how many cars have you got? Someone told me you've got quite a few. Um, 21 at the moment, yeah. Maybe we could do an episode just at your place. <laughs> it's a nice little shed yes yeah. Roger tell us about your car uh, the 850 it's um, it's a car that was owned by a lady in Baldwin and uh, which is an inner northern suburb and it's remained in the inner northern suburbs I'm not that far away from where where it was and the other other two owners which ha they had for a short period of time were in the northern suburbs as well so it's um, it was sold by a local dealer um, all the original documentation, things like that, you know, um, and it and it drives like a little original car because it hasn't been to pieces. It's a piece of history, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Um, obviously, it, it hasn't been knocked around. It's been well looked after over its term. What sort of condition was it in when you got it? Uh, in in pretty good condition. Um, only a couple of little things hadn't been uh, weren't the original things. Uh, the headlights weren't the uh, pre-focus headlights. The, that had an alternator on it, but they came with the original generator, so I was able to sort of, yeah. you know, just really just clean it, basically. Just a couple of smart modifications to make it just a little more improved over the years. It's uh, a real standout car here. Even when we look at the sliding windows, there's the original dealer sticker there as well. That's right, and if you even go down inside the, the passenger's door, there's a little metal tag there from, um, from Lanes, yeah. and so it was car number 1048 or something like that, that Lane sold, you know, so yeah. it's it, but the 850s are like that. I've got other cars that you know, things like Cooper S's and things yeah. where they they've they've been run around the block a few times. Yeah. Uh, whereas the 850s they tend to sort of hide away, yeah. and so you get one of those, you get to see what the the cars really were about then. And Absolutely. and it's been interesting, you know, even just driving it here today along the Eastern Freeway, it sits there at about 55 mile an hour, and it really loves, you know, just going along. I bet you get plenty of looks. Yeah, yeah, they sort of look down because yeah. Anna, Anna said to me, oh gee, you know, all these other cars are all up there and, you know, we, and and I said, well that's the same size as my car that I drive during the week. Well, I've got to take my hat off to all the guys, everyone that's turned up here today. The Mini fraternity is strong and if you're watching the show and you'd like to be a part of the Victorian Mini Car Club, they're a great bunch of people to be associated with. It's people like Roger, people that you can turn up to, to meetings, club meets, outings, have a talk to and if you haven't bought a car what's the advice um, look for something original I think is the advice you can you can move it from there yeah, make sure that they're insured with the right company and you use the right engine oil as well hey they're the two major sponsors we, of the show we use Penrite so as it as it so happens <laughs> yeah and we do use Shannon's insurance all of my cars are there thank you so much Roger and before we go it's also nice to see you out with your daughter Anna and uh, I'm sure she enjoys the little car as well she does she does very much thanks Fletch thanks Roger 
Well, what do you say to that? Some mighty minis on this week's episode of Classic Restos, put on by the Victorian Mini Club. Now, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show, along with other Classic Restos merchandise. While you're there, why not consider yourself on a Fletch tour for 2014 to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, United States of America, or the Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit? It's all there awaiting you at classicrestos.com.au when you click on Fletch Tours. And while you're there, see the major sponsors and how they can help you as well. Until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV. And episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil.